Cast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining. This is Jason Ulrich with Top Shelf Traders. It's great to have everyone here. We've got a really good-sized group joining us. It's just one minute after the noon hour on the East Coast. We've still got some folks filtering into the room. If you could do me a favor and just throw a quick yes and yes, just to confirm that you can hear my voice okay <laughs> and that you can see Melissa's screen, okay? That would be great. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Philip. Awesome. Perfect. We still have a few folks filtering in. Outstanding. We are thrilled to have Melissa Armo here with us today. Uh, Ms. Armo, if you have heard her name before, uh, that is not a coincidence at all. She's the owner of Stock Swoosh. Uh, she's also a regular stock analyst on Fox News. And her topic that she has for us today is very appealing. Uh, it's something that a lot of our traders and readers and followers are looking for one basic strategy, take 30 minutes a day and earn $20,000 a month with one strategy. It doesn't get much more appealing than that. I referenced from time to time our survey that we had done and we went out to our 250,000 plus traders. I think it's clearing 300,000 by the end of the year. And we asked what they were looking for. And among the topics was just a basic strategy uh, that they can apply, they all had, or the better majority of them seem to have limited time. So here we're going to talk about uh, learning to trade, day trade stocks with momentum, how to find that momentum, and why shorting can be extremely profitable for you as a trader. So looking at momentum as an overall tool or topic. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, Melissa Armo has been the owner of Stock Swoosh and a contributor for Fox News. But one of the things that I absolutely love about her background is she came from uh, the mortgage business and she gave that up to pursue her love of trading. It's something I can personally relate to, having spent a career doing something and then moving into trading. So very excited to have you, Melissa. Thank you for joining us. Thank um, you. We've got a full group here in a full room, so I'll man the questions box for you. Uh, and real quickly, before I turn it over, uh, we'll be sure to answer the questions that come up in the questions box. I'll man the questions box. And of course, this is being recorded for everyone. So sorry about that, Melissa. Uh, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here today. Welcome, everyone. And yes, my name is Melissa Armo, and I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh, and I've been trading now for almost 10 years. I started out in 2008, so it's been a long time, and actually I don't remember even the career before I had when I was doing mortgages, what it felt like to work so many hours. One of the benefits of day trading is that even if you trade all day, your day is done at 4 o'clock. Now, we're going to talk today specifically about the strategy that I focus on, the time of the day that I trade which is in the morning. So I'm looking at between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. And that's not to say that you can't do trades sometimes and hold them later. In fact, we will talk about uh, one today that I did last week that I did hold. If something's still going, you can hold it. But I think it's very important to focus on that time of the day, at least if for nothing else, the entry, all right? So we're gonna go through and we're gonna talk today and we're also gonna talk about how you can make 20 grand a month and really the idea of that is that you would be able to do this for a living. There's a lot of people that make attempts at day trading. I think one of the challenges that people have with it is that they're not focused enough. So that's what we're gonna talk about today as well. Focusing on one strategy so that you can get good at it. Because it, you know, in order to make a career out of this, you have to be extremely good at one strategy to do it. And, that's, and then you can do other ones, but you gotta get good at one first and be profitable at that one first. And I think it's about the consistency. So if you're interested in more information, you can call me 929-3200 GAP or email me at melissathestockswoosh.com and you can watch me on Fox and Fox Business Network. So how can you make $20,000 a month in the market? 
Well, you have to have a system, okay, and you have to use it daily, and you can't deviate from it. So how do you make money in the market consistently? You have to have more winners than losers. This sounds like common sense, but the reality is that many people don't focus enough on one thing, and they're all over the place using different strategies and different systems all the time, any given day. And so then the results reflect that because they may do strategy one, two, and three between Monday and Friday, and so they may have a certain percentage of win ratio with one strategy, strategy one, different one with strategy two, different one with strategy three. Well, then your results are gonna reflect that. My strategy, my system has about an 80% win ratio. So that means if you figure 10 trades, two are gonna be losers, eight are gonna be winners. And I do use stops. So when we go over the trades today, here you're gonna see where I, ha I have stops. I use limit order stops. And that means that I have a fixed risk when I take a trade. And if you want to be consistent, then you have to have a fixed risk. You have to use a stop or know that you're going to kill a trade. And when I say a hard stop, like I said, it's a limit order. Because, you know, people say, well, I'll get out if it goes here. Well, will you? You know, sometimes, and the market has been quite volatile lately, if you don't have a stop in, you may miss your exit to take it out manually. So having a stop really protects you. It's like the insurance. And at the end of the webinar today, we're going to go over the trades called in the trading room from October, November, which was really good results. Now, it was earning season in October, November, but I just want to show you here how you can make way more than 20 grand a month trading. All right. So you can make 30 grand a month trading. And November, actually, I was closed for the, for the Thanksgiving week. So there wasn't even a full month of trading. So really nice results in the room if you decide you want to come and learn with me and take all of my calls daily. Now let's get back into what we're talking about as far as the time of the day. The morning into the open, again, I trade the U.S. stock market. So I'm looking at that 9.30 time. What happens between 9.30 and 10 a.m., all right? So Eastern Standard Time, the market opens. You have the pre-market, which opens very early, but most traders are focused, that are day traders, on trades after 10. But what I focus on is trades between 9.30 and 10 because I'm looking for what institutions are doing into the open. So say, for example, like a fund, a hedge fund. They may see an earnings on a stock. Could be any stock, all right? Amazon, Google, whatever. And then they decide they want to buy or sell that stock into the open of the day. So they're not going to sit around and wait until 10 o'clock to take a big position. And so what I look to do is determine before the open, before 9.30 in the pre-market, or you could do it in the post-market at night, but I usually do it in the pre-market, and I'm predicting where the stocks that are gapping are going to go on the day after the open, after 9.30. And I'm looking to focus mostly on shorts, but I do look at longs, and we'll talk about longs too. So I'm looking to go with that institutional money in the gap, and we're gonna, I'm going to explain today what a gap is too. So you can make this kind of money in the market, but you have to have a system that you follow daily and you've got to get good at it. And a lot of people say, well, you know, I've been trading for 20 years, Melissa, 15 years, 10 years, whatever. Like I said, I've, I've been only trading for 10 years, which actually is a small amount of time if you look at a lot of traders that I've talked to. But I'm really good at what I do because I focus only on reading the gap. And so anyone from any walk of life, no matter what your experience is trading, you have the opportunity to get good at something and make this kind of money if you really hone it down and focus. And that also means not deviating. So if I look at something and I think it's a short, all right, and if I take a stop in it, then that's it. I take the stop. I don't flip it and go long. Because when I say focus, I mean I'm really, really focusing and I don't deviate from that. And the way that I look at goals and this is, you know, this could be for anything. Any goal you have in life, particularly even, you know, monetary goals, I think it's good to break it down with the numbers. But chunk it out. Look at everything as a process. So if you want to make 20 grand a month, what's your goal? Well, 5,000 a week, 1,000 a day. But again, you have to look at it in the bigger picture because maybe one day you won't trade. So then you say, well, I didn't make my $1,000 goal today, but there wasn't any good gaps. But tomorrow you may, might make 2000 you might make 3000 okay? So you really do have to look at it in the bigger picture with trading. Now, if you want to hit these numbers, 
you should know your average risk should be around a thousand dollars a trade you could risk less if you if you can't afford a thousand and then guess what you will work it up you will have a goal you will have a process to reach that goal so you will grow your account to get to the point where you can risk a thousand dollars a trade if you want to achieve this goal it, it again everyone comes from a different placement and you have to take the money that you have and grow it whether that is a small account or a big account you have to work with what you got because you're not going to change with what you got unless you go out and you do some other kind of job or work full-time or part-time or do something outside of trading if you want to wait until you start with a larger account i don't think it's necessary i think the learning process is part of all of this and many people don't understand that you don't have to wait until you have a huge amount of money to day trade there are other options out there uh, you can go and talk to many, many different kind of brokers. There are proprietary day trading firms out there that will give you 10 to 1 leverage, 20 to 1 leverage, all right? So think about that when you're looking at your goals. Chunk it out. Start where you have. Look to build your account. But in order to hit these numbers, you want to be risking about $1,000 per trade, okay? And as I said earlier, I use hard stops. So time of the day. Why is that time of the day important? Because momentum. Momentum comes into a stock into the open, either up or down, in gaps. So I'm looking for the follow through. So if a stock gaps up, I'm looking for buying to come into the open. If a stock gaps down, I'm looking for shorting or selling to come into the open. Now, if I don't see any momentum coming into the open between 9.30 and 10, it doesn't mean I'm not going to do the trade. But I will tell you, if the trade isn't set up by 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., then I'm probably not doing the trade. And I typically want to see a lot of momentum in that first 15 minutes of the morning, so between 9.30 and 9.45. Now, for those of you that don't know what a gap is, we're going to go over that right here. This is a daily chart. It's a chart of the SPY. SPY has had a huge move this year. Ever since the election, ever since, really, ever since Trump got elected, from November 2016, you could have bought the SPY, in, in November, or any of the ETFs, QQQs, DIA, you could have bought any of them right after the election, morning after the election, and been up ever since. For 13 months straight, the market has rallied, and you almost could have bought every bullish gap. Not everyone, but almost, okay? Now, there were two particular ones that were very important that happened recently, but I just want to go over here again what a gap is. And again, you can do bullish gaps or bearish gaps, but the SPY had a lot of bullish gaps, which means it's been rallying. So this is a gap. A gap is when a stock closes at 4 o'clock Eastern time and opens the next morning at a different price. And so here, the SPY closed here at one price. Take it across and go over. It's around 248-ish. Boom. Gapped up in the morning around 249. Opened higher. So it closed at one price at 4, opened at a different price at 930 in the morning. And between here and here, something happened. It got bought. SPY got bought. So between 4 o'clock and post-market trading and the pre-market trading in the morning, there was buying that came in. So you say, well, what am I going to do with that one, Melissa? Well, I developed a system to, to rate it in the pre-market or the post-market to determine if this is going to move higher or lower. All right? And like I said, I never flip it, but this was a good long. And actually, this was back in September. This is September of 2017. If you went long this bullish gap in the SPY, again, take it across. High was 248. We ran up, and the previous high that we've made, which was not today, it was a couple days ago, I think it was Friday, Thursday? Oh, yeah, it was Thursday. was up around 266. So if you had bought this gap just September, October, November, just in a three-month period, look what a nice move this was. Now, this is if you did a swing trade or an option trade. But if you had day traded this here, Guess what? It worked, okay? So that's a gap up. This is a gap down. So here we have the SPY closed here, boom. Open lower. So it closed here one number, open at a lower number. So a gap down. And actually you could have shorted this as a day trade, but if you did it as an overnight, it never had the follow through. But if it's a day trade here, you could have shorted this gap down and it sold off, okay? So every day I'm looking for gaps and I like to focus on the shorts but the SPY has not been a short, um, it has been a long, all right? So that is what I'm looking at. So I'm really, I, I, I'm a chartist, okay? I'm looking at the technicals. And for those of you that know what technical analysis is, I'm gonna go over in a minute, but I'm really looking at the price action of what's happening. Now, if you like to follow fundamentals, that's fine. But, you know, 
you're not always going to have the accuracy rate with the fundamentals because a lot of times the stuff is already is already built in there into the price already so it's after the fact and when you're trading and sp particularly if you're day trading you have to make split second decisions um, minute by minute decisions what you're doing in trades so you really got to see right now this second where the stock is trading and make a decision. And I like to know where I'm going with it ahead of time. Like I will figure out the support, I will figure out the resistance, I will figure out the targets, all, I will figure out as much as I possibly can before the open, all right? Now, that doesn't mean that it's always gonna go to the target, but very often the stocks do. And so I'm looking at price, because price supersedes everything, even fundamentals in the market. If you're a person that likes fundamentals, fine, use that. Combine with the technicals to do a good job trading. Uh, but if, if, if it's not there, you have to focus on the price. And that's one of the reasons that I've called the market in this rally. So a lot of people are looking at the market and they're saying, well, it's extended, it's extended, it's extended. I'm not seeing that. That's not what I'm seeing, all right? It doesn't mean you run out and buy the market today, but I definitely don't think the market's a short right now, all right? So what is technical analysis? It's the methods used to analyze securities and make investment decisions. They fall into two categories, like we said, fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Fundamental analysis involves analyzing the characteristics of a company in order to estimate its value. And in reference to the market, it's usually news related events, okay? Technical analysis takes a completely different approach. It doesn't care one bit about the value of a company or commodity. Technicians, which is what I am, are sometimes called chartists. That's what I do, I read a chart are only interested in the price movements in the market. So I say the market, but it's really any stock symbol. And again, I'm trading stocks on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. So I'm looking to at a daily chart of a stock, and I am determining before the open, after I see the gap, I'm not predicting the gap itself, I'm waiting till the stock gaps, all right? And then I'm looking at it and I'm saying, okay, where is this gonna go in the gap today to day trade it? Can I short this? Can I buy it to make any money? And again, I'm looking at that specific morning time because I want the momentum come, to come in there. And that's what I'm focusing on because if I see I'm gonna get a lot of momentum, then I see that I have the potential that I can take a trade and get something called the money move, which I wanna get early. And that allows me to get in and out quickly to make this kind of money. Because really, the shorter amount of time that you're in the market, the less you're at risk. So if I can get in a trade in and out in five minutes, two minutes, one minute, 10 minutes, I'd rather do that than hold a trade all day, okay? Because anything can happen. And you never know until you're out of the trade and the money is booked, until the fat lady sings, I say. So the sooner I'm in and the sooner I'm out, the better it is. Although to get big moves, sometimes you do have to hold trades longer. And, and I'm not gonna get too off target about this or often a tangent here about what we're talking about today. I want to focus on the whole system itself. But when you really want to get good at something, it's like training yourself like in sports. All right. You have to train your body and your brain to do the same actions day after day after day after day. And you're training your eyes to read price in the charts. You're training yourself to read strength. You want to buy strength to make money going long. And you're training your eyes to short weakness because that's how you're going to make money to the downside. So you want to be able to read the weakness because that's how you're going to make money shorting. Weak, okay? So when you train your body and your brain to do certain actions every day, take trades in and out in the morning, look at charts, take money off when you're up, you know, take stops. When you train yourself, it's your mind and your body to do the actions together because your mind can see everything right, but if you don't press the button, you're not gonna make a dime. And if you press the button before you're thinking through the trade, then you're probably gonna take the wrong action. So it's the combination of your brain and body together that you must train doing the same actions. And that is something that I've done well since the start. When I first, first decided I wanted to day trade, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And there was a million different strategies out there and I probably looked at every single one. Uh, one day I ended up making a lot of money in a gap trade and it happened to be in a short, okay, which is funny because at the time I, you know, it was like long or short, I was just happy to make a lot of money, but the stock had a lot of momentum. It was Netflix and I made over five grand in one day. And that was, that was like the first week I ever traded live money. 
so, you know, and then I said, there's something to this thing, but there's not a lot out there about gaps. And I'll tell you that the places that are out there that talk about gaps very often uh, are saying a lot of the opposite things that I'm saying. Gaps are, the gaps are complex. I'd like to say you can buy every bullish gap or short every bearish gap, but you can't, all right? You just can't. And if it was that easy, then it would be very easy to trade. The fact is that there are specific ones that are better than others that have the institutional buying or selling to come into them. And that's what I look at in my system. But the one thing I did well from the start is focusing just on one thing. And that has helped me to become successful and, and more successful as time has gone on and to teach people as well. I think a lot of people want to be jack of all trades and everything, but then they never get good at anything. And, and you, you don't have to do a lot of things. What you can do if you want to make more money in the market is take overnights, take swing trades, take options, take day trades, use one system for different types of trades, and also risk more money over time. And that's how you make more. But again, first things first, get to the point where you're even doing something consistently at all, and then you can increase your size. It's not about doing lots and lots and lots of things. So chart reading is a skill, and it's really like le learning a new language. Like if you go out and you want to learn Spanish, uh, which is an important language to learn right now in the U.S., you know, or if you go to a foreign country and you're there for just a short period of time and, and uh, you know, you want to learn what the language is, say you go on a vacation to France, something it, you know it's it's like a whole new thing and charts is like that so the more you do it guess what the better you get even if you read charts in a weekend at night after four o'clock when you're out of a trade you're going to learn something if you take the time to sit down and focus on it so what do i do as i've been saying i focus on technical analysis and gaps and understanding price is critical to determine if i want to take a trade or if i don't want to take a trade and that's where it gets down to it. What's important and what's not. What's important is price. You can say all these things in the world, here's the support and here's the resistance and here's this and here's that, Melissa. You know, like I was saying, people are saying, well, the market's extended, all right? Listen, the market's getting bought. Talk about strength. There's incredible strength right now in the in the market and how is that there what when we're, we're talking about price and what does that really mean what does it translate into if you're just reading a chart as flat on your screen it's money so if there's money long the market people are long whatever stock okay it could be any stock at all i'm just talk right now about the spy which is an etf if people are long the spy then they are in it with money with a lot of money the market's being bought up so that's a sign of strength in the price. It's not a sign of weakness. So for people who say, well, the market's extended. Well, where's the sign of weakness in the market? I don't, I don't see it, all right? In fact, all you've seen is follow through. Not only since the election, although you've seen a tremendous follow through since the election because the market's moved 20%, but the market's been bullish actually for years, all right? When you're going to short something, you want to short what? Panicky action. And this is why I prefer to short, to be honest with you, because I like to get in and out of trades quickly. And it's just the fact that stocks tend to drop faster than they tend to rally. And you have to be more patient with longs. And sometimes that's hard for me to do. But if you can be patient, you can, you can get some shorts to bigger targets as well. But the quick move is what I'm looking for. And it's the sell-off. It's the panic when people are, are upset and they're down and you're shorting that. All right. Now, here was an example, actually, of, of strength. This is Amazon. Stock closed here, gapped up, okay? This was an earnings on Amazon out in October. The stock had a huge move. So, again, this is a gap, just to quickly go over. Stock closed here around 980, boom. Open the next day here into the open, into 930, from 4 o'clock to 930. Stock opened around 1060-ish. Hit a huge move of the day. Flew over. 1100 and again the stock was bought and it got bought ever since it actually went over 1200 which you know was the next number and so you have buyers in here so this is buying that happened in the gap so this was a good long and you could have also done it as an option trade anyways my system looks at 26 points which i figure out all ahead of time so i'm not ever just trading on the fly i'm rating each gap in the morning before i trade i'm determining that if it's a good long or a good short based on the gap before 9.30. It's reading the momentum in the gap 
that's helping me predict if it's gonna come through on the live day, like for example, that Amazon, all right? Now again, we went over this, but here's the definition. What is a gap? A stock gap to the opening price today is different from the closing price of the previous day's trading. A gap is a break in the price action from one day to the next, simple. What is not simple is determining where you're gonna take the gap, long or short, and also which gap to do. I think it's best to do one ticker symbol a day. Sometimes I do two. It's rare I do three. Usually if I do three, I'm having a bad day. But I typically like to do one trade a day and one ticker symbol. And again, that has to do with the focus. But the idea is what stock to watch because there's thousands of stocks that even gap every day. Actually, if you wanna be really specific, most things gap every day. It's rare that something would close at 32.05 and open the next day at 9.30 at 32.05 exactly. But I don't consider something that closes at 32.05 and opens the next day at 32.10 necessarily a gap that I would look at a rate. But really, most things gap, period, every day. It's about finding the one to focus on. And again, it's about the momentum. And again, it's about getting it right into the open. Now let's look here at this ADSK. This was one from last week. And actually, I was, I was on TV this day, but I saw it at night. So you can sometimes pick a good one at night. Stock closed here the night before around 1.30, boom. Opened in the morning here around 1.14. Stock did what? Gapped down. So this, like I said, happened in the nighttime. It was an earnings gap, reported after four in the after hours, and then held the gap into the morning into 9.30, and it was a short. And here you have a stock that just had a huge, big move. Went to the dream target. So what are you shorting here? You would have shorted panicky selling action, all right? Because the stock action was a good long until here. And you can see the rally. Rallied all the way up from October, rally, 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 made new brand all-time highs actually the day before the earnings, up over 130. But then, whatever the earnings said, again, I don't read the reports, you see the reaction and what it did. So I coined my system golden gaps because it's like finding gold in the market because you look for stocks that have these huge massive moves because you're looking for institutional money. You're looking for it to sell or go long the gap. In the case of Amazon, great example of institutional money. Buying that stock, number one, the price point and the move it had of the day, which was like almost 100 points up in 24 hours. And then ADSK, another great example because the stock dropped six bucks on the day. And for stock to sell off like that, you have to have big money selling their long shares or shorting it. But golden gaps are made by professional traders and institutions, banks, hedge funds, you know, they have tons and tons of money in the market. And that's what you wanna look for because that's what, where the momentum is. And you can see here even the volume, go back to the ADSK, see the big volume bar, this is volume down here, compared to all the other days. Huge, in fact, let's go look at the Amazon one there you have it as well. Big, huge. So this is, again, the volume. So these are the days that you want to be playing it. You know, it's not to say that you wouldn't maybe be doing some other gaps, but do you see here the difference between playing something like this or even going along one of these days in here? I mean, this is how you're going to make the money. This is where you want to hit it. And you don't, you don't know, okay? Because you, you're, again, you're looking for stocks, your different ticker symbols every single solitary day. So let's go over the, uh, again, the concept. Institutional money, they move the market. They're moving the market up, all right? They typically do like to go long, although institutions will short. But, you know, most of the mutual funds, all of these, they're, they're, they're long stocks, okay? So what I'm looking at doing is to play with that money because it's easy to make money when you're with that money. You're never going to move a stock yourself. Even if I had, you know, 3,000 people in the trading room, we would move a stock. And I do trade stocks that have volume and typically have a good share size in the day. I'm not trading thin stocks and I never do penny stocks either. So you really want to play stuff that moves. A dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars, five dollars all right, and to trade a range of stocks. So I have a formula to rate which gap to play. Gaps are an event. If you look at a print out a daily chart and look at circle all the gaps, they create a sense of urgency in the good ones. They force an action by participants of the stock, whether people are long or short it. They have to either buy it or sell it. Something's going to happen. So it's a powerful way to profit in the market as a trader. Again, that's the idea of the strategy itself. The event is the gap. 
So the strategy is the gap. So whether I'm looking at support or resistance, whether I'm looking to go long or short it, the determining factor is, is it gapping, number one, and does the gap rate per my system, per the 26 points, good enough to do it at all? Because like I said, not every gap is playable. So it's the combination of power money moving stocks with volume, okay, and momentum, reading the price, reading the support and resistance levels in what's happening in the gap, and then the time of the day, and watching it to take the move, all right? You make money in the market by taking a stock in the right direction, predicting it before it happens, and getting in before the money move occurs. And that doesn't mean before the gap, because remember, like I said, I'm not predicting the gap itself, but I'm waiting until the gap happens, then I'm qualifying the ticker symbols of the gaps I want to trade, and I narrow it down to look at one or two a day. So here was, again, the ADSK. Again, if you pull this up on your scanner after 10 o'clock, here's after 10, you say, oh, well, this is lower. But who the heck wants to short this thing in here? What you want to do is know at the night or beforehand in the morning, whatever, that this is good to watch it right out of the gate. So you see here, whether you got this move here or whether you got this move here, this is where you want to be entering the stock as far as your price point to get the short. You don't want to be waiting and looking until after 10. I mean, there's no good entering in here then. Although this was one you could have played later in the afternoon. But again, I like to focus in the morning. So you have to be able to predict that this is going to break and drop and go, not that it's going to lift and fill the gap, which, by the way, does not work. And that's not to say that some gaps don't fill themselves, but I never use the terminology. It's a made-up thing, and it really doesn't work because institutions don't trade like that, all right? Traders trade like that. And so what I'm looking for is what is an institution going to do with ADSK today? Or this could be anything, Amazon, whatever. And that's what I'm trying to figure out before I do it. Anyways, like I said, this was a good gap. Gap down here, fell, broke. Low in the day was like 106 something. And here was the short. So how do you make money? You watch the one minute chart. You pick the gap beforehand. You know which one you like and which direction you're gonna do it. You gotta wait for the setup. And the short was in here and you got the drop. So whether you held it all the way down, whether you got out at 10 o'clock, whether you held to the target, it doesn't matter, you're up, okay? But this was a huge, huge trade that you could have gotten at a great price because it was a highly qualified gap. And again, time of the day, 9.44 for the setup, before 10. Entry, and we'll go back and look at this in a minute, 111.90, stop, 112.55. This was the correct timing to do this for the correct short. Although there were people in the room that did this earlier. This was, this is, you know, per my system, this would have been the correct entry. If you took an advanced risk, 2,500 shares would have been what? 16.25. Again, you want to hit around that $1,000 mark if you're going to be able to hit these numbers of 20 grand a month. Exit if you held it all the way down, 108, which you might not have done. This would have been your goal for pretty much the whole week and really half your month. And I just use this example here to show you that some of these ones, if they're going, you don't have to get out. And the reason I want to show you this here is because the sell-off just kept going. I'll show you how to, you could have managed it. Anyways, here was the drop. Some people in the room did it here, but technically for the system, the proper entry was here. Anyways, here was the drop. Now, if you took it here and you got out here, guess what? That was still a great move. This is down around 110. Now you're up in here. If you get it down, you say, well, I really like it. I think it's going to go. It rates really well. It, you know, we, we don't have to worry about the market today. Pushes back, you could have pulled the stop down, lower the stop, and you were still been up here, and then you got it down and dropped. So if you're up in something, it's not like you have to kill it by 10, is the point I just want to make, but you got to manage it tight. Or you could get out of half. But you will have days like this when something really runs and really goes. And guess what? This makes up for the days that you don't trade. It makes up for the couple days you have losses in a month. Because you're going to have two or three days in a month where you have losses. And that's part of trading. But you need to make money more days than you lose. And again, it's very important to me to use stops. Now let's look at the SPY. So that was a short. This is a long. So this is a what? A bullish gap. And this was, this was just a great call. So last week, the SPY gapped up. Closed here, gapped up. This was last week on Thursday. So this is Thursday, Friday, Monday, here's today. I don't know where we're trading today. Anyways, the market gapped up and was a long. She could have gone long the SPY in here on Thursday. And we did that in the room, it was a nice trade. So I'm gonna show you this. Again, 
You could have aggressively did it here. This is a one minute chart. I squished it to show you the whole train. But anyways, I felt a high level of conviction this would go to the number of the target of the day. I felt very certain of it. And, it, and in fact, it went past the number I said. But anyways, you could have taken it here and got out. You could have taken it here and got out. I did give the targets in the room. Anyways, we did it in here, dropped, rallied back, dropped. If you stayed with the train, it kept going. It went 225, I said I felt 100% or 265. I said I felt 100% certain it would go to 266 is where it went. So many people got out of 265, but if you held it, guess what? It went straight up. So here's the area here. Look where it got the lift. This is 264. I know this is really small. Here's where the lift got. So again, you would have followed the trade up. And again, you got to manage it though. So you don't want to let something drop against you. Anyways, this was the entry all the way down in here though. So early in the morning. So this is, see here, you want to get in here. And you could have got out before 10. Anyways, entering this was 224.05. This is a great call. Stop 223.50. Originally it was 223.60. And then I said, give it, give it a little bit more room. Time of the day actually was a little bit later than this. 3,000 shares, advanced risk 1950, exit 225.95. Right up, it boots over 226, didn't go over, you take it. Anyways, this was a really good call. $5,700 profit, it's basically your week. So last week, actually, you could have only done this one trade and hide your goal for the week, but you would have had to risk 1,950 bucks. And people always ask about the, about the size of the price point of the SPY. Again, this is the benefit if you wanna have a prop account, all right? where you would be able to take a position size like this, where you get more leverage in the monies. But what if you can't? Then you take a thousand shares. If you took a thousand shares of this, no matter how you slice it, the move was two bucks up. If you took 500 shares, you made a thousand bucks. If you took a thousand shares, you made 2000 bucks. It's real money, people. And this is what people just, just don't understand. Sometimes they wanna do stuff. That's why people tend to go to these penny stocks and things. I mean, they're just so risky. You know, uh, there's no way to accurately have any conviction in anything they're going to do. Most of them move on news events. Uh, it's just like trading crap. You know, I'd rather see people take small size and stuff that runs and moves and you can accurately predict, even if it's a little bit expensive. Take 100 shares. It's profit, all right? That's how you're going to get good. And then you grow your account and you get to the point where you can you can make this kind of money and take this kind of size. But I will tell you that many of the stocks that we look at trading are between, you know, like $25 and 65, but sometimes you get an expensive one. Anyways, what do I do? I rate the gap in the morning. I wait for it to set up after 9.30. I don't trade in the pre-market. I take the trade, I put in the stop with a fixed risk. If it gets stopped out, I get stopped out. I take the loss. If I'm in it and I'm up, I try to hold it to the target for the first move, what I call the money move, and I get out with profit, all right? And that is what I do. And if you come and learn from me, that's what you learn, all right? So I have a checklist, it's a professional way to trade, and I focus on one system and I don't need to do anything else. You can use it for swing trading, you can use it for options trading. The benefit of options is you don't have to worry about leverage. So you could have done an option trade in this buy, and you wouldn't worry to have to worry about the buying power of the margin. What I'm looking for is stocks that are gapping, that have a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Okay, in an ideal world, you want to be able to do something all day long or short. A big move of the day, again, want that big move, want the momentum, early confirmation between 9.30 and 10, and precise entries with good follow-through and a good risk to reward. And I'm trading in the one-minute chart, which a lot of people don't really do, but you would learn how to do that from me. And I find there's a high level of accuracy in that. Not after 10, but before 10, there is. So it's a multi-purpose system that you can use for many things. And again, you have to look at, you know, what your time is, whether you can trade in that Eastern time in the morning in that time, if you can't, whether you can use a system for options. You're not going to learn how to take an option trade from me, but you would learn the system to be able to know if you could buy a put or buy a call in something. So this market's had a big, big move. It's been rallying, as you see. And we'll see where it goes. I think 2018 is going to be a very exciting year to trade. I think 2018 is going to have a, a lot of volatility in it, in stocks and the market. And it's going to be very clear when things are strong. The clearer the market is showing its, its hand, the clearer it's going to be to read other stocks. I don't know if that makes any sense. But like right now, it is so clear to me how strong the market is. 
And when I look at stuff then that's crap, it's so clear to me then that it's not a buy or that it's a short, all right? But if you really want to get good and you really want to make money trading and you wanna, really want to do it as a profession, you got to get serious about it. And I think 2018 is going to be a great year to trade as a day trader because you're going to see a lot of the moves and you're going to see a lot of action in the market. And, and it's just the beginning. I mean, I think it's just a, a, the beginning of a time of economic growth for the country and and all of that is, is already started. I mean, it's already started, but you're really going to start to see it. So again, gaps. Why does playing gaps give you an edge? Because it's an event in the chart and you have momentum in them. They typically have big moves, which is a day trader you want, okay? Otherwise, you're scalping. And a lot of times it's very difficult to make money scalping. You have to do too many trades in a day. Your commissions add up to be too much money. It's so much nicer if you can just take one trade in, one trade out, and be done for the day and have your goal like that. Many traders are, are very active and trade all day, and they've got more losses because they're taking more trades. I think the market is something that you can do and you can make money doing, but you kind of got to also look at it like you got to take your money and run. I always say, you know, no piggies because sometimes you have a really good day and you just feel like you're unstoppable but nobody's unstoppable against the market. So if you look at it like I have one job to go in and do this thing every day and then stop when I'm up, then you'll do so much better. Um, it, 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 it's just one of these things where less is more. And, and that's one of the things I think gives me an edge too. You're never gonna have a lot of losses that way. You're gonna keep the money that you make when you're up. You're gonna, you're gonna have a respect for the market where you just take what it gives you and it does give it to you. It does give it to you, just you have to be able to find it. This idea of trading, 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 I think you never get an edge like that when you trade all day and it just racks up your commissions and you never really get good at one thing and you end up going long and short, long and short, long and short. One of the reasons that I've gotten so good at reading this bullish market so accurately is because I really focused on shorts at the beginning of my career and I did get really good at reading uh, weakness in, in charts and as a result of that eventually then I became very good at reading strength because then I saw what was not weak and that's where I'm saying the market is still going to continue and people are thinking well like with the sell-off that happened on Friday or even yesterday it's it's not any sense of urgency I guess for the market now let's quickly talk about percentage of return in day trading and in our concept these are things that I did not create okay but you can use these things to help you determine how much you want to risk, all right? I use stops. It's a good idea to have a set risk per trade. Whether it's $100, $200, $500, if you want to make 20 grand a month, though, you're going to have to use a minimum of 1,000. But you should have similar to that in all of your risk, all right? So if you risk $500 in one trade and $2,000 another trade, that is not similar. So it has to be similar. So, you know, it's called an R unit and it should be the same for most of your trades or, or, or as close to it as you can. When you're looking at return on investments in positions for options, again, it doesn't have to do with the margin or buying power. It's how much money you're risking and can you flip it around. So ideally you want to be able to flip around a trade that you're risking an option 100% return investment. Meaning if you risk a thousand bucks, what you're looking to make a thousand bucks. So if you're up a thousand, if you're in a trade, you risk a thousand bucks. If you're up eight fifty, does it mean you don't get out? No, you could get out. It's basically your goal is in. All right. So the idea is you need to make your money work for you, whether it's day trading and the R concept or whether it's option trades with return investment. You want to be able to look at it and say, I'm making my money work for me in a good way, which again is, like I said, I don't look at scalping. I don't really scalp. But this was a trade back I called it on the Walmart, the set earnings, I called it the day. We did it as a day trade and then I called it as an option trade. I called the 100 calls. Stock went almost to that number the day of and then the next day it went through it. Um, so it was a quick trade. You could have bought this for 35 cents. <laughs> Again, no margin and BP in options. So 15 contracts would have cost you what? 525 bucks, all right? And you could have made $975. So again, if your risk is 1,000, you would have made even more. You would have made almost two grand. But do you see here how you could have hit your goal with that as an option trade too? 
And you could have done this one here. I'm seeing this. This was back in October. I don't remember the reason for this, but this was an earnings gap, and this was a really good one. So this gap in the morning, I saw this would get to that $100 number, and it, and it did. And actually, this is ready. This is setting up to break out again. This is the current chart of this here. We're talking about this in the room this morning. This is going to do something significant soon. Again, bullish. Anyways, let's talk quickly about results. I'm just going to quickly go through here because I know we're getting close on time, and I want to give some questions. This was all the trades called in the room from October. There were days I wasn't here that a trade I did radio and TV. But I just want to show you, I did not trade all of these days. And look at the results, okay? But this is an advanced risk. So in the parentheses is how you show a loss. These are losses. And you just see here how I did one trade, one trade, two trades, two trades. See, this is how you put together a, a, a week, how you put together a month. And it doesn't mean that every trade is positive, but more trades are positive than negative. But you can see here, there's not a lot of trades. This is how you become profitable. You just get very, very focused. So October was a really big month, over 35 grand for October. Again, it was earnings season. November started off slow, got into it, really strong, strong week, then the second week in November, and then didn't have trades some of the days. Again, some of the days, if it doesn't meet your criteria, you don't do anything. Close for the holiday, good week last week. And now, here we are, it's the end of the year. So November was good, tw over 26 grand. So these results are possible. This is if you did all my trades, I called in the room, I give the entry, I give the stop, I give the target. You must take my course in order to join the live trading room, but I'm doing a special through Friday of this week for the last class of the year, uh, where you would get the trading room free for one year. One quick thing I'll say here, though, is if you decide you want to do this for a career, you must take it seriously. It, you know, must take it seriously. That means time. That means money. It means the investment and in learning from someone like me in the cost of the class, opening up an account, learning a platform. And, and part of that is an emotional investment, too, because if you've been trying to trade and you've been unsuccessful and you've been losing money in the market, you got to get past it. Because, I mean, if you can't let it go about this crap that's happened in the past, then you're never going to be successful. The longer you hold on to stuff that's happened in the past, if you've taken classes and haven't learned from the people, or if you lost money in the market, it's not going to help you become successful. There are stumbling blocks all along the way if you really, really want to be successful in life, no matter what you want to do. And trading is absolutely no different. One of the benefits is that you're in and out quickly if you trade my strategy for the most part. Most days were done early. And obviously, you can work from home. So think about what I said. Think about your plan of action for 2018. What do you want to do? You can you know, teach yourself and create your own strategy like I did. That's a long, expensive process. Or you can learn from someone else. You know, Those are pretty much your choices if you want to make it. But I think people don't take training seriously enough, and, and you must. So I have only serious people that come to me. They pay for the course, and they are in the room, and we're very focused in the morning. Trading room is open from 8.30 to 11, all right? Only in the morning, and that's the time that I want to focus on trading. I have one solid strategy I look at. You'll learn multiple entries and plays in the class. You will learn one afternoon entry, although it's rare that I do it. You're going to learn how to trade the open, look at gaps, and you're going to learn you know, how to really think about money in a, in a way that that's going to help you be successful. And uh, we're almost at the end here, though. I'm going to try to rush through this here to get some questions because I know we're going short on the time here. But um, my class teaches a 26-point rating system. It's two full days, and you would learn from me uh, and the difference is that I created my own method, and it's all that I do. It's all that I teach. I'm very passionate <laughs> about the market, about stocks, about gaps, about what I do. Um, like I said earlier, I've been, I've been talking on television, and you know my passion comes across, and that's how I've got to do it. You know, I really, really do love the market. And I love, the, the biggest thing I love, I guess, is the fact that I have the ability to be able to predict where somebody's going to go. It does not mean that I'm right all the time, but I definitely am right a lot. And I think that when you are passionate about something that you do, it really comes across. It comes across in my training, in my class. When If you come to learn from me as a student, it makes a big difference because it helps to reinvigorate you. If you've lost the passion for training, you've been doing it for years, you know, you got to get that back again. Otherwise, how are you ever gonna? How are you ever gonna make it? All right. So you will learn how to trade gaps with me, and here's the information. So it's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is online. It can be anywhere in the world to take it. It's December 16th and 17th, nine to five Eastern time. 
Cost of the class is $49.99. If you're interested, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com to sign up. And like I said, I'm running a special, which the trading room and the options letter are free for one year, so be all of 2018, through Friday. So the deadline for that is December 8th. The class is the weekend of the 16th and 17th. I also have a class for swing trades. It's the trends course. This is December 18th. This is $9.99. It's one day if you want to learn it. And you can sign up for both and you get the trading room and option letter free and you save $500. That'd be $54.99. You do them all three days in a row. Last class of the year. And any questions? I'm going to give a little time here. That was awesome, Melissa. Thank you. Uh, we've got uh, one question here that came through. Um, it just has to do with being able to evaluate the the gaps. How do you reliably predict the gaps? The charts show past data. So how are you able to translate that into something you can take into the start of the day? Well, that's, that's what technical analysis is. You are looking at past price action on a chart to predict the future price action. So the 26 points that I was talking about that I review in my checklist before I determine if I'm shorting or going long something, that whole point system is what you learn in my class. I couldn't go over it in five minutes. It's a 16 hour course, but that that is what I do, that I look at the past price data and that helps me determine if it's 20 points or more per the 26 point system, then it's gonna go in the direction of the gap. If it falls under the 20 point criteria, then it has low odds. Again, trading is about uh, high odds you can't you can't predict 100 percent of anything so you're saying well i have all these things together i've got 20 points to 26 that tells me there's a very high chance this is going to work today with momentum and continue in the direction of the gap and if it rates under that low odds okay so in trading you have to assess the odds it's called calculated risk and that's also like i said where i use a stop but i, I couldn't explain all of that because that's that's what i charge money for it's worth money but it's also like 16 hours in the class but it's it's not something where you ignore that data. You look at the data. But I will tell you the challenge of reading stocks like Amazon, Google, Walmart, I'll, I'll, uh, the SPY, is that a lot of these things don't have any past price data. They're at all time highs. So you look at something like Walmart. I mean, there's times I'll call something and people take my trades in the room too and they're like, they don't, they don't know how I saw that. I saw that Walmart was going to get it to 100, and I just, I mean, I got, the only thing that I could explain to you that I saw that was going to go to that number on that day or the day after was the, was the sheer buying power that was coming in, just, just, just coming in so quickly in the morning of the stock. I mean, I don't, I don't even know how to describe it other than the fact that the gap rated well. Didn't mean you had to hold it to 100. We did the day train, but it's like you, you learn over time how to read something in when you're watching it trade live like it's a lot easier if you're watching it live than going back and looking at a stationary chart but there's no past price data in some of these stocks and that's why it really helps to be able to read that 30 minute period from 9 30 to 10 because once you learn how something acts in that period you can see oh my gosh this thing is going to go like a truck and run all day it's called power trending it's like power trending adsk power trended down walmart power trended up got it Got it. Fair. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, one other question here from Don. Don is asking uh, on stocks with big opening gaps, the bid and the ask are often very wide. Mm -hmm. How do you enter on these wide spreads? Yeah, I, you know, a lot of, I'm, first of all, I'm never entering something at 930. I never enter at the open. I'm watching it to enter between 930 and 10 and usually things will thin out. So I, I try to let it flush out a little bit and start to trade and I'm never getting into 930. And I also have to have volume before I'd even take it. But I will tell you, you got you to price it into the position. So there are times when we will trade stocks that are spreading. And sometimes the expensive things are. The SPY, the spy isn't. But, you know, if you're familiar with the stock, which most of the things I'm familiar with, I will tell the rim, I'll say, we're probably going to have a 10 cent spread in this, not 30 cents. But on the open, it might be 30 cents, but it tightens up. So that's why you got to wait a little bit. But there are some stocks that have spreads and you price that into your risk. So if your stop is 50 cents and the spread is 10 cents, you're going to have to price it for 60 cents because you don't want to get dinged out because of the spread. But you got to know the stock. And if you don't know the stock, then my suggestion is don't trade it or you ask somebody like me. Got it. Okay. Great. Uh, any other questions from the room? Uh, great questions. Uh, we had a, a few 
uh, focused on how uh, evaluating how Melissa evaluates the gap. Uh, Melissa, one of the other things I can do is put your email in the chat here, if sure. you're okay with that. Yeah, and if anybody wants a trial for the rest of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com if you want to trial the room for free before this special expires, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We, sh we, we should have some good things. There's some stuff that's out tonight um, that I'm watching that I'm going to watch after hours to see that could move. There are Lulu's out this week. Uh, HRB reports this week. We're going to have stuff to do. It's not earnings season in December. You do have to be very, very picky about what you trade. Uh, but I will tell you that there's going to be some things that we get. I'm like, there's going to be the good ones. And I will go after the good ones when we get them this month um, to see. But December is one of these months where you got to be picky, but I'm picky all the time. So if you want a trial uh, to check out the room, you can do a free trial this week. Fantastic. Great. I put Melissa's email in uh, the chat box there. So if uh, you're interested in the trial, which is a really great offer, it's only Tuesday. So plenty of time left to trade yet this week. Uh, go ahead and use that. And for those of you getting ready to grab a sandwich or get your lunch or get back to whatever it is you were doing, or maybe even get back to a little bit of trading this afternoon, thank you very much for joining us. Melissa, thank you for that. That was perfect and uh, very helpful and also very different from what we've historically had here, which we really appreciate for our top shelf audience. So thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thanks for having me and have a great holiday. Absolutely. Thank you. And, and for everyone that's joined us, we'll go ahead and publish a recording for this and any links that uh, would need to be included either from Melissa and her team or for the video, look for that in a follow-up email. So have a great rest of the week, everyone, and we look forward to being in touch soon. Take care.